Hey folks, I want to take a look today at Laravel Prompt. Now, Prompt is a brand new package from the Laravel team that allows us to add beautiful and user-friendly forms to your command line applications with browser-like features, including placeholder text and validation. That sounds pretty crazy. Uh, the terminal has historically been a bit of an ancient piece of technology and we're used to things feeling a little dated. So if there is now a package that allows us to add very beautiful browser-like functionality to our form inputs, to our user input, then I'm all for that. The other cool thing about this is that, yes, it's already included with the latest release of Laravel, but you can install it in any PHP project. So it's framework agnostic. Why don't we test that out first? I'm going to grab the composer require here and let's create just a simple directory. We'll call this test. Uh, we'll cd into test. Inside the directory, well, let's compose it in it and we'll confirm generation. Okay, once we have our composer set up inside the project, let's require Laravel prompt. And now I'll open this up in my editor. So let's start nice and simple. I'll create a console.php file and we're going to have to require once our auto load so that we're able to access the functions uh, that prompts makes available to us. I think the most basic prompt is a text. So here's text and we can say, what is your name? And maybe we have a placeholder of e.g. John Doe, right? Something like that. Text returns the value to us. So we can save that in a variable. And then maybe at the bottom here, we could just echo hello name like so. Let's see if that works by going to our console and I'll say php console.php. Look at that, we have our first text input. What is your name? Let's enter Luke Downing. And there we are, hello Luke Downing output in the console. Now again, we are not inside a Laravel application here. This is just a raw PHP file with the composer dependency for Laravel prompts. So completely framework agnostic, you can use this in any context you can think of. And straight away, well, you get beautiful console input that really does look like a styled field on a browser. You would expect to see something like this. I mean, look at that. The label is actually dropped in alongside the outline of the text box. Really nice features there. Why don't we go ahead and have a play with this in something a little bit more complex? I have this artisan command, which I've been playing around with for a little while now. And it basically allows me to expedite setting up a new site on Laravel Forge. It's actually pretty cool. Let me show you how it works. So we'll execute PHP Artisan add site, and we have to provide the domain name, which will be blogger.downing.tech, along with the GitHub repository, which will be Luke Raymond Downing forward slash blog two in this case. If I hit enter, you can see it asks me if things are okay. The table is formatted slightly incorrect because we have this long path here. But if I click yes to this, sure enough, it will start to add the site. You can see it's enabling quick deployment. It adds the correct deployment script for me, configures the queue, configures the scheduler. It performs all the tasks that I would usually have to manually perform to get a new site up and running. It saves me a lot of time. However, I have to remember all of this. I have to remember what order the arguments are provided in. I have to remember the options. If I come back to this like a month later, I've usually forgotten. And for a while now, I've been meaning to make it a little more dynamic and request input if I forget to add it. So make it a bit more graceful, a, a little bit more user friendly. I think prompts is perfect for adding that particular use case to improve developer experience. So let's go ahead and get prompts up and running with this artisan command. I think the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the arguments that I have previously uh, passed manually into the command here. So the only thing I will call is PHP artisan add site. And from there on, I'll be prompted for the information. You can see currently I'm capturing all this information here. So this is what will be altered to now use Laravel prompts instead. What would we use for the domain? Well, there is a text function that uh, prompts makes available to us. So let's go for text and we can say domain name. Uh, perhaps we could do an example as the placeholder. So e.g. and we could say domain.com. Once we have that in place, I think there's a required property we can use. So maybe we set required to true here. And let's clean this up a bit to put things on separate lines. Let's see how that works in the CLI. PHP Artisan add site. 
it asks me for the domain name let's say blog2.downing.tech and I imagine now yeah it's going to fail on me if I do add site again and I don't provide anything and just try to click enter because we say the field is required note that we have this validation error where it highlights the field in yellow so pretty cool when it talks about browser like features this is what it's talking about that is something you wouldn't usually experience in a CLI application very nice neat all right the next argument we ask for is the repository this is another text so we'll grab text again and we can say github repo and perhaps we have uh, another placeholder eg Luke Raymond Downing forward slash repo and then we could set this one to required as well because we cannot set up our site without a repository to install into and once we have that is there a way to validate this yeah here we go validate let's just take a quick look at the text function itself and that gets past a text prompt or it gives a text prompt let's look at where this validate is called prompt validate prompt until valid uh, so how does that prompt until valid work uh, we pass it the validate and ah, here look if validate then error equals validate result okay so it calls it as a closure and it passes in the result which is the current prompt the current value of the prompt okay let's jump back into add site then with that in mind we should be able to say validate and pass a closure which receives the current value and then inside here we should be able to do whatever we want so let's do something simple like if not string value contains forward slash please enter a valid github repository in the format username forward slash repo okay github copilot gets it right most of the time otherwise we could just return null here and i'm pretty sure if we return null it would class that as valid so let's see if that's the case i'm going to comment out this one here because i don't want you to keep watching the same thing over and over in the cli and then let's go for php artisan add site again and here we go it is required if i just enter luke raymond downing and nothing else please enter a valid github repository in the format username forward slash repo if i do forward slash blog then of course it passes this validation isn't perfect because yeah you can see it's validating as okay as soon as i enter a forward slash so in actual fact we probably want to use some regex here instead which would be more accurate but for now i think this is absolutely fine let's move down to the php version so i can specify a php version here but this is limited because I'm selecting from this enum that I've created. So I have a choice of 7.48, 8.1, or 8.2. Now I think Laravel Prompts provides a select, and yes, it does. You can see we pass in the label options instead of placeholder, the default scroll, and then a validate once more. So let's go with a select and say PHP version. If we want to pass in the options, well, I'm going to have to say something like PHP version. Uh, cases and once we have cases I can array map those cases a callback that receives a PHP version and the PHP version is going to return the version value which is the string that we'd actually want to show inside the CLI application so we have that in place we can set a default and I do want to set a default I'll set it to PHP version 8.1 and it's the value of that enum and then I can also set validate, which I think I will do. And I want to do something a little bit special here because I want to make use of Laravel's validation. So the validate facade. Let's go ahead and see if we can make that happen. I'm going to wrap this in a try catch block and I'd be expecting to catch a validation exception if everything works correctly. And I can return E errors uh, value zero like so. All right, let's fill in the actual try part. So I'm going to create an instance of the validator, which is Illuminate support facades. So validator validate will call the key value and set it to the value we've been given. And then I want value here. And this is where I can add my validation rules that Laravel provides. So I think there's one called enum. Yeah, here we go. Illuminate validation rules enum. And then I can simply pass in PHP version and that should ensure that everything works as expected. If it passes, well, I'll just return null. So the validate is saying, okay, we're gonna try to make sure that the PHP version you've selected is inside this enum. 
If it's not, well, I'm going to return with an error. And seeing as that is now confirmed to be a PHP enum value, I can do PHP version from, and then I can wrap that around the select, and we should once more have a enum PHP version as the value here. Let's see if that works. I run PHP artisan add site, and here we are. That is a select box inside Laravel prompts. I can use the arrow keys here to tab between them. Did you note that 8.1 was the default selected, by the way? So if I was just quickly hitting enter, I would very easily be able to select that option. That's really nice. I, I wonder what would happen if I had like 10 items in here or something crazy like that. Let's go ahead and add a few more. Uh, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6. Would it just carry on extending down the page? Let's run the command again. And look at that on the right hand side. That is a scroll bar, right? If we, yeah, look, as I scroll down, we select different items. The scroll bar moves. That is crazy. That is a browser like feature right there. I think as well, if I remember correctly, in select, we can set an integer for scroll. So if I was to say scroll 10, for example, and then we run the command again. Yeah, now you can see we show all of them without the need of a scroll box. So that's pretty cool as well. If you have more than five items, but you don't want that scroll feature, you can absolutely alter the number of options available and the display will change to suit. Now, the next bit of information I actually request is the deployment script that you want to use. So here inside resources deployment, I have my various deployment scripts that I tend to use with my various projects. So mix is obviously if I'm using Laravel mix, Vite is if I'm using Vite. And I want to be able to select between these but I don't want to be locked into selection because sometimes I'll have a custom script that I create for a one-off project. So I sort of want to be given suggestions along the lines of what's in my deployment directory, but I want to be able to provide a completely custom path if that makes more sense. And again, there is a suggest function that is provided with Laravel prompts that I think suits this case perfectly. If you take a look at the arguments, yeah, they look very much similar to what is already provided with the select dropdown. So let's go ahead and say deployment script. And for now, why don't we hard code the two options that we have? So maybe we have uh, Vite, and Vite is going to be the resource path for deployment, Vite.sh. And then we also want mix. So I'll update that to mix and update this to mix. And we do need to make sure we have some form of script for our deployment. So I'm going to set required to true here. Okay, let's see how this works. So PHP artisan add site. It looks like we have a text input. It has a little down arrow on the right hand side here. Okay, so if I click the down arrow, maybe ah, look at that. So if I click the down arrow on my keyboard, I'm actually taken through the options here and I can hover over each option. And I'm imagining if I click enter, that's the one that's going to be selected. But can I also just type? Yeah, I can just type as well. So if I type users, I wonder why the, is that auto completion? Okay, let me try this out. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit excited here, but let me just try this out. If I remove, say this, and let's set this equal to a disk instead, right? Something weird. Uh, let's restart the command and I'm gonna say forward slash, oh, look at that. So as you type, the auto completion suggestions pop up for you, which is really cool. And then you can quickly tab over to them and select. What a great feature. Wow, that is so nice. Now, obviously I wouldn't want to do this manually every time I add a new deployment script. So let's write a little bit of dynamic code here. I'll make use of the file helper facade and I wanna grab all files inside the resource path for deployments. We'll collect those up and then I'll map over each one, which is an SPL file info, I think. SPL file info, so file, and then I'm going to grab the file path. So get real path. And then I think I can actually pass a collection straight to suggest. Yes, I can. So let's assign this to a variable called scripts. And then instead of passing this manually, I can instead pass scripts. Let's see how that looks. PHP artisan add site, deployment script, and I can tab down to see my options down here like so. That works perfectly. What a great feature. Okay, the final two pieces of input are username and password. And this is for basic auth. So I can protect my entire site using basic auth, 
but I don't always want to. And that's why these are options rather than arguments. I think the first thing I'll do is check if you actually want to use basic auth in the first place. So I think there's a confirm function. Yes, there is. Do you want basic auth? And if the answer to that question is true, well, then I'm going to require a username and a password. So yes, that should be a text field username, e.g. admin required is true. And the password is going to be, I think there's actually a password function. Yes, there is, which we have a label of password. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the placeholder. I don't think it's needed, but we do have to require the field because you said you wanted to use basic auth. Although maybe we don't have to require the field. Yeah, let's not require the field. Instead, let's go ahead and do something crazy like this. Password or string random and we'll set 12 characters. So it will auto generate the password if you don't provide one. Okay, now we can get rid of these two items here. And maybe just for the sake of clarity, we could say username equals null and password equals null as well. All right. Hopefully that will now work. Obviously we're going to fail down here because we'll need to uncomment, but let's just see what happens when we run this one more time. Do you want to use basic auth? Yes or no? Let's say yes. Give a username, admin, give a password. Let's enter a password. And yeah, now we get a load of failures because obviously we need to uncomment the things that we've currently commented out, but that is working. It's working really nicely. Uh, now for password, well, I want to validate. So let's create a function here, which receives the value. And then we can perform the validation that we want. I'm going to do the same try catch trick I did earlier. So validator and validate. I'm going to pass value as value, set up the rules as value. And we'll use the password rule that Laravel ships with. So password default. So I can catch the validation exception and we can return the message there e errors value zero. Otherwise, we'll just return null, which is a success. Now, I'm going to have to repeat this over and over again. And I understand completely why the validate closure doesn't have built in support for Laravel validation, because this is framework agnostic. But I think we could improve this slightly either by introducing a global function, or even like down here, we could just create a private method called validate. And inside validate, well, we could pass in the array of rules. It's going to return the closure, which is given the value. And that closure is basically going to perform the same logic. So uh, we need to allow it to have access to those rules. But yeah, it tries to validate. It catches, it returns the string, otherwise it returns null. And now up here where we perform the actual checks, let's say this one here, rather than passing all of this information, I just have to say this validate passing an array where we say password default, and that should work just as well, which cleans that up a lot, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment all of these now. And hopefully we should have a fully working Laravel prompt space command that we can make use of. All right, let's see the finished result. So PHP artisan ad site the domain name, let's say blog2.downing.tech. The GitHub repo is going to be Luke Raymond Downing forward slash blog2, if I can spell correctly, blog2. Uh, it's going to ask for my PHP version. Well, I'm happy with 8.1. The deployment script, I'm going to quickly select Vite. Do I want basic auth? Um, yeah, why not? And I can set a username, I can set a password, and once I have that, well, it asks me if the details are correct. Am I happy? I'll select yes. And then it's going to go ahead and use the Forge API to configure the site for me. How cool is that? That really didn't take long to get up and running with either. It was pretty straightforward, pretty simple. The functions make sense. The parameters that you pass make sense. Yeah, altogether, just a very nice polished package that does exactly what it says on the tin. And it just works. I mean, you might think that it's not doing much under the hood, but have you ever tried to create nice CLI input yourself? <laughs> it takes hours. It's such a pain. So there's obviously been a lot of thought and time and effort put into this package. And I think I'm going to be using it a lot for my PHP artisan and CLI applications going forwards. See you soon.